Hey folks, Marty Nowicki from Impact Snap. Wanted to actually make a video based on a comment uh, a couple, about a month and a half ago, I was down in Orlando. I'd gotten off an airplane. In one of the videos, I was hitting some drivers and someone made a comment about my back. <laughs> Now, I wanted to comment that uh, 29 years ago, I actually had back surgery, double lumbar laminectomy, L4, L5, S, S1. And since that time, I've actually spent a lot of time really trying to protect my back. So I'm gonna show you a couple swings and a couple, couple ideas when you film yourself what uh, you could be looking for. This is Matt Wolf on the left and Patrick Reed on the right. And I'm gonna, I'll rewind Patrick so I can uh, show you kind of where his starting points are. And I always try and draw lines up from about the ankles or outside of the shoe when people are starting, okay? And kind of one of the keys to protecting your back, I would say, would be at some point in the downswing, we're looking for level knees, okay? So I'll just kind of chart Patrick's knees, they appear to me to be fairly level. Here's Matthew Wolf st starting his down, so I'm gonna back that one up. We're gonna look for level knees. Uh, back that up again, sorry, I missed it. And then we're looking for a pelvis that stays inside of where the, out, where the ankles started. Okay, so I've, I've traced some lines where uh, Matt Wolf's ankle started and you'll see that he's got a square foot if you haven't watched all of my videos start watching them because the more square the foot the more I'm expecting the foot to actually turn but the key here is in protecting the back level knees equals a level pelvis or a more level pelvis which is important when we're talking about the lumbar so as Matt Matt Wolf continues to turn the pelvis and the femur, you'll see his foot will completely reposition itself. Now, a lot of people think that, that a position like that will add pressure to the spine, and because the foot isn't physically on the ground, yet the spine is torquing, but again, I'm measuring level knees, that equals more of a level pelvis, so there's less uh, improper torque of the lumbar and the bend points would then come from more of the thoracic section. So here goes Patrick Reed, and th this is a film, uh, you know, a few years back. This Patrick was at Turning Stone a few years back, and you'll see how his foot also is squared off, and it's gonna physically leave the ground and replant itself. Well, a lot of people think that that adds pressure or t unnecessary torque to the spine, which case, um, in my findings, I just don't feel that it does. But I just figured, you know what? Let's try and make turns where the pelvis stays between the feet. If the feet happen to move, that's quite all right in my teaching. Certainly hitting a driver um, because we're, we're looking for as much leverage off the ground as we can get. And what's miraculous to me is a lot of people look at both pictures and they look and they say, geez, look at how nicely they finish or post up on their left side. But when you go through these videos, I want you to kind of notice where they were at the moment of impact or even just post impact because Patrick's foot's off the ground as is Matt Wolf's. Because the foot's off the ground, the femur is, and the hip are trying to turn out of the way, you'll see more of a, of a uh, roll release or a swivel release that I, that I like to call it. And in Matt Wolf's case, although it's a little blurry, he's as stable as you can get right at impact and just after impact. Uh, and because the foot is moving, that's telling me, hey, the pelvis is trying to move and lo and behold, it rotates after the fact, but if the foot was on the ground while that stuff was happening, he'd have some issues with his ankle, with his knee, with the left side of his pelvis, primarily his hip, and likely his lower back, so. 
just a couple things to think about when turning let's try and keep uh, do your best to keep your uh, pelvis between your knees certainly while hitting a driver that allows us to swing up into the ball make good contact we're looking for high launches low spins until next time i'm marty nowicki for impact snap signing off stay safe everyone what do your hands and arms look like right after you struck the golf ball if they're bending all over the place guess what? You have to film yourself and start correcting that. We have a product called the Impact Snap that trains your wrist to repeat a correct motion each time. Yellow ball hits the bottom of your arm, you're doing it correctly. Yellow ball misses your arm, you're flip rolling, changing your radius, changing all these measurements where the ball is. You want stability with your golf shots, you want consistency with your golf shot, you've got to get the wrist to repeat the same proper functions. ImpactSnap.com. Use promo code YouTube and save 15% today.